Alright guys, hope you're all good, welcome back to the channel, and if you've seen the title of the video, so you already know what it's about. But first, before we get into it, let's play a quick round of Spot the Difference. So, let's take a good look at the setup and everything. Can you spot the difference that I've made to the studio? Comment below if you can, see if you get it right, but let's get into it. If you're like me and like to get quite a lot of your beats finished so that even if you're not going to post them you kind of know they're ready and finished and you don't have to keep going back to them doing that, you're going to be doing quite a lot of mastering. And something I found myself not really knowing about was limiters and that's a problem because that's a big part of mastering. So I thought I'd better learn what a limiter is then. Here's basically what I found out. It's basically a compressor with an infinite ratio. So if we get a compressor up here, I've got the ratio at two because I want to glue it all together, like in my glue compression tutorial. So if you want to check that out, I'll put it up here. An infinite amount of compression won't let any amount of sound go past a certain amount. If you turned it all the way up to 30 or maybe even higher than 30, you just can't get through. You can use it to like bring your, your music up to level. Quite a lot of people use two limiters, one at the start and then one at the end. This is just a multimeter to tell me kind of what's going on. Let's get into the first one. What you want to go into is dynamics and then adaptive limiter. And the difference between the adaptive limiter and the normal limiter is that I don't actually know. So if you were hoping to find that out then you've come to the complete wrong place. I've just seen tutorials where people use this one. The first one which I'm putting on before anything else, before anything like my EQ or my compressor, just keep it at zero but then drop this look head down to 20 so that it really reacts fast to all the peaks that it sees. I'm looking to have it at around minus 3 dB so it should be around here somewhere. For all of this mastering in general you want to play the loudest part of your track so for me obviously with this one that is the core so let's get it going. Push up the gain until we get minus three. You can always reset all these numbers by just clicking them. 7.7. .7. And what that does is it catches the peak of all kind of the kick drums, mainly the snare drum in this case as well, so that when I've got this compressor, it can work a lot better on the whole track in general and not just taking care of stuff like the kicks and the snare. It's gonna generally keep ticking over and still catch the kicks and the snares, but work on a lot more of each instrument. So on that lead I've got going, that kind of Japanese sounding thing, so that's all good. Then what you want to do is obviously do your EQ, maybe put a DS or something, some compressors, whatever you usually put on your master. And then the final thing you want to put on it is another adaptive limiter. This time put it down to minus one because when you're uploading your music to Spotify, SoundCloud, YouTube, it's going to put it through some kind of algorithm that brings it up to level. If your music's peaking at zero, which is obviously for digital going to be distorted, going to really have a hard time doing that and it's going to come out sounding a lot worse and you obviously don't want that. This time we're going to put the look head, I mean it's kind of set here, but before we put it at 20, so that would really catch the peaks. If you put it to 200, it loses some of the punch of the music. But I think around 50, if you want your track to be a bit more punchy, maybe 40, so I'll put it at 45, that kind of a thing. And then here, this is where it's important. You wanna put true peak detection on there. Now we wanna see what level our music is actually at and bring it up. And you're gonna hear at the end of this that the music's definitely a lot louder. We're looking for minus three reduction and we might have to bring it down maybe. Let's just see. That's pretty good actually, minus three, but obviously on different tracks it's going to sound different because in the first thing you're going to have different amounts of gain going there. So here we've got our two limiters going on and I think if we turn them on and off you're going to hear quite a large difference in the volume of the music. Yeah, so there it was kind of at minus five, now it's at 1.6 which still isn't distorting because it's only in the yellow and I'm not hearing any distortion even if I turn it up on my uh, headphones there. But it's, it's, yeah, it's sounding really good. Having louder music can also make it seem, I know it doesn't, but it can make it seem like your music sounds better. 
That's why I do the last limiter as like the last thing. I want to make sure that my compression, EQ, and anything else I've got going on there is definitely kind of doing its little job and stuff like that. So yeah, hopefully you understand limiters a bit more than you did before. I definitely do, and I think it's interesting to see how adaptive limiters are. I'll try and, I'll try and work out how the adaptive limiter is different from the normal one. Let's do a quick video for that. Don't forget to comment below about the spot the difference thing. There's going to be a video coming about that soon. If you want to enter the sample flip challenge type thing, then I'll link that down below as well. And you can check out last time's video where I actually made the sample. So if you want to check that out, I'll link it up here as well. If you're new around here, obviously subscribe and hit the bell button so you never miss a video. Again, thanks for watching. And I'll see you in the next one.